Hello guys, Sid the IT guy here and in this video we will take a look at example of how we can sync all the orders from the Shopify GraphQL API and we will see how the implementation is done on my end. So we will be ignoring some of the fields like alerts and the app here because frankly we don't need it. So let's like take a look at the implementation on how I have done it. So the job file that I have been writing before that, that I showed you an example of REST API that has been modified a little. So in the handle method, you will see that there is a third parameter called this mode. So this is passed in the construct where the mo mode is taken as rest by default. And uh, this is assigned here. And in the handle, if the mode is GraphQL, then handle with GraphQL API, otherwise handle with rest API. So in the Shopify controller, you can see that there are two lines now. One of them is commented and uh, the one that I am using is passing a third parameter called GraphQL. So we are specifically mentioning that we need the GraphQL API to work here. So yeah, that's fine. So let's take a look at the example of how this is defined. So in the customer's example that we saw earlier, uh, we saw that the first thing I do is take the headers, then I define the endpoint, which is always GraphQL.json. You can find these two functions in helper.php. So you will get to know um, it's it's a simple function anyway. So then we are running a do while loop. So the cursor is initially null because uh, we pass a page info parameter in the query where it tells us if it, ha if it has more pages. So we can use it and we can keep paginating over the orders. So then we do a do while loop because I want the loop to run at least once. And we define the query. And in the query, um, this is the function here, which is sending the cursor parameter in it. So this is used uh, here. So in the filter, I am taking the first five. And um, if it is not equal to null, then it will take after the cursor value. Or otherwise, it will take null. So that's fine. Now we can see um, the query, how it is built. So it starts with orders, then the filter just above here, then the edges, and then the node. So after that, I have uh, listed out the properties of, uh, not properties, the fields of the order API that we see here. So there are some fields here, billing address, billing address, uh, can mark as paid, can notify customer, cancel reason, cancel that, and all that. So some of the selections have been made here. And for the line items, uh, this is another connection that uh, API provides. So if you scroll down a little, then you will see scrolling a little too much the connections so discount applications events fulfillment orders line items so here it is so if we want to paginate over the line items then this this has to be uh, specified like this so we have taken the line items the first 20 and inside that again the edges and node and uh, it contains the attributes that we are looking for in the line items so we can see the id image the image has an attributes of its own id alt text url and width then the name and the non-fulfillable quantity the product has its own attributes which is id product type title vendor updated act and all that and we keep going like this and we also put the page info parameter in here in case the order has uh, more than 20 line items then it will help us paging it over just the line items but this is a uh, this is a, this is a further requirement which I'll be covering later. So then we have the shipping address, then the billing address, and then the fulfillments, and then the customer, the current subtotal price set, the current tax lines, and that's it. So yeah, so these are the attributes that I have taken in the beginning. And uh, at the end of this function, what it does, it is simply closes down the opening brace that we had here in the first line and it returns a simple array which is query and inside that the query variable so after that what we do is this response variable contains the make an api call to shopify method which is always post i have mentioned before and the endpoint the null headers and the query the query means uh, the, the request body that we need to send along with it so now i'm dumping the response and let's take a look and what we are getting so if i refresh yeah, so here we have status code 200 and body is uh, two indexes present. 
So extensions, um, it will tell us the cost of the query that we ran. So it can say the currently available is 959 and the restore rate is 50. So that's fine. So let's take a look at the data. So inside the data there is orders and inside that there is edges and page info. And it says has next page false. So it means that uh, we can halt our looping here. And in the edges, we see that there is node yeah so inside the edges we can find the actual orders so there is only one order so that is why we are seeing just one and this is the node that contains these attributes so the problem that we are facing now is these columns these keys don't match the column names that we had in the table so okay so here are the column names for the orders but but these don't match the ones that we have gotten in the output so there has to be like a mapping function I have to write where I will map each of them to the ones that we already have in the orders table so let me write that and uh, I'll get back here so let me first show you how I can write this so let me take away this response and yeah I can say that the if the status code if the status code is 200 then save the customer response in db so so i can say save the order response in db and let's define this function for now here itself private function this and it will say user store order So let's see what we get here in orders. So this customers has to be replaced with orders. Yeah. Let's run it one more time. Inside that there is node and in it. So let me see. So if we can loop over it, if orders not equal to null and greater than zero for each orders as order DV order now let's see what we get here yeah now we can get the node and let's also see what we get if we pass this yeah now we have a simple array of uh, order attributes so let me write the function for mapping these out to our table and I'll get back here. So we are back and I have made the appropriate changes to the code where uh, the column names will match the ones that we are getting in the GraphQL API. So it starts here where uh, if response status code is 200 then save orders here. Then in this function what I'm doing is taking a temporary array and looping over each order at once and appending to the db orders array and in that i'm calling this format order for db so you will see what i'm doing here so i'm receiving an order here and uh, so i'll show you so db order so if i click sync orders yeah this is the one that i get here but the, all the keys on the left side needs to match with the ones that I have in my code uh, I have in my database I mean so for that what I have done is this so I'm looping over it one by one and I'm getting an equivalent key for the GraphQL key this function so it is a simple switch statement so for the attribute that I'm receiving here I'm running some cases on it and uh, if it is not found if it is something else entirely then return null so you will see here for email it is email for taxes included it is like that so there is this underscore here and like that I have done it so if the key is not equal to null I mean if it falls under the keys that we are expecting only then take it and apply it to the temp payload uh, key here and in that we are just checking if it is array or not if it is then just encode it that's all then assign the store ID because that is important we need to assign uh, the order the store ID that it belongs to 
and then take the line items and then format the line items accordingly then take the shipping address uh, it falls under the same function format billing and shipping address and the fulfillments so fulfillments one uh, I just left it blank and I did return fulfillments you can uh, write your own code here if you wish and at the end uh, I'm again once over once again I'm looping and I'm JSON encoding anything that is an array so that is what I'm returning here so we can see the format billing and shipping address here so first name uh, should be first name here without the space and the underscore and the same thing follows like that I'm doing that because uh, I'm trying to match GraphQL's API output to the REST API output. So we don't have, uh, we don't ever have a clash if we wish to switch our API methods from REST to API, REST to GraphQL, I meant. So the same thing happens for uh, the line items. So here you can see how I am uh, matching on the left side. These are the keys that we will get in the REST API on the right side we are working with the values that we have found in the GraphQL API. So it matches and it returns the array in a standard format. So yeah, this is it. And uh, in the query object, I added uh, these lines here, fulfillments and total price set. I haven't used it yet, I think. But uh, if I haven't, then you can add the code. And I've also added shipping line because we need the shipping information as well. So yeah, let me know, um, run the code. And uh, in my database, I am, I am seeing that there are some columns that are getting blanked. So I will look for the solutions here and um, I will keep updating the code. So it uh, you know puts the correct value in the place where it is supposed to be. Yeah. So this is an example of how we can use GraphQL API. I think I have taught you how to uh, format the query here so just uh, make sure that these are the direct values in the fields that is provided in the documentation these are also the fields and line items is a connection that is why I had to uh, do first first 20 first 20 should cover your case entirely but what you can do here is uh, where you are formatting the line items you can also pass an order ID here and in the edges you will also get the page info information so if i show you here so the page info yeah i'm sorry so line item assignment yeah so let me show you what comes here yeah so here you have the page info as well so if it returns true then in the in this function itself you can reiterate again and again uh, with the same order id that you have in the first argument in this function and you can fetch all the line items at once and you can form the array at once. So you won't, you won't face any issue if your order has more than 20 line items. So let me close this out. And uh, yeah, delete this. Let me run it one more time. Yeah, it runs fine. Yeah. So hit a like on this video if you liked it uh, if you'd like me to create a video about creating products from your app using the graphql api let me know i can easily implement that and subscribe to my channel while you are at it so that's about it see you